For the Daily Radio News on Kettering University's 94.3 WKUF, I'm David Jackson for Wednesday, June 2nd, 2016. The Michigan House approved a speed limit hike on state highways to 75 miles per hour. Brian McVicker on MLive.com reports that the legislation narrowly passed the House as part of a multi-bill package and changes a previous version of the bill what that would have allowed for 80 miles per hour on some highways. Representative Marilyn Lane of Fraser voted against the measure, saying that Michigan roads are riddled with potholes and giving residents the ability to drive faster could be hazardous. Along with the changes to the speed limit on some highways, speeds on gravel roads could change to 55 in some rural areas or 35 in counties with large populations. The bill now heads to the Senate for debate. Governor Snyder spoke at the Mackinac Policy Conference yesterday and encouraged Michigan residents to take on a positive attitude even in the face of extreme challenges. Emily Lawler on MLive.com reports that to gales of applause, the governor told the crowd that reports of his demise are overblown and he is still focused on solutions to the Flint water crisis. Governor Snyder noted that in addition to solving the problems of Flint, He is also committed to boosting the state's economy after noting that since he took office, Michigan is no longer the worst state in the country, but rather that the state is nearing the top in terms of economic strength. The Michigan Department of Environmental Quality Executive Jim Saigo told Michigan State Police during an interview that the Flint water crisis was overplayed and more created than anything else and possibly a result of ulterior motives. Ron Fonger of the Flint Journal reports that the MDEQ executive questioned the extent of the damage to Flint's water infrastructure and inferred that Flint leadership was playing up the crisis in order to secure more money for the repairs of the city. Employees of the Michigan Department of Environmental Quality are currently under criminal investigation, and the statements from Saigo were deemed harmful to the investigation as they are considered compelled statements. While Mr. Saigo was appointed by the governor to replace Leanne Schechter-Smith last year, the governor's office declined to comment on the statements and added that everyone is entitled to their own opinion. A senior Chinese diplomat said yesterday that the United States should stick to its promises of not taking sides in the South China Seas. Reuters reports that recent land disputes on islands in the South China Sea have highlighted overlapping claims to the territory by multiple countries in the region. A Chinese vice foreign minister, ahead of talks between the U.S. and China, said that the United States is not a claimant in any of the disputed territories. The diplomat said that China has every right to protect its own interests in the area, adding that his country hopes that the U.S. can set its position based on the rights and wrongs of the case, rather than whether one of the other countries is an ally. China is building islands in the disputed territory and allegedly placing military assets in order to lay exclusive claim to the multi-trillion dollar shipping lanes in the South China Sea. Federal regulators are proposing significant restrictions on payday loan lenders. The Associated Press reports that the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau proposed regulations that would give further protections to consumers who can fall into so-called debt traps from these high-interest loan providers. The new regulations would require payday loan lenders to give additional warnings to customers before attempting to debit money from borrowers' bank accounts and would aim to lower the frequency of overdraft fees common with these types of loans. The proposed rules will likely face stiff opposition from payday loan industry lobby groups who say that these rules would eliminate 84% of their industry's loan volume. The CFPB is currently seeking comments from the general public and interested parties before final regulations are issued. In sports, the Detroit Tigers ended a four-game losing streak yesterday by defeating the Anaheim Angels 3-0. Detroit starter Michael Fulmer gave up only two hits and two walks in seven and two-thirds inning, which is the second time in as many starts throwing the same number of scoreless innings. Tigers bats scored mostly on singles, which gave the Tigers their first win in Anaheim in 10 games. According to Alden Gonzalez on MLB.com, Fulmer is only the fourth pitcher since 1913 to win five of his first seven career games. The Tigers are home tonight at 740 to face the Yankees in a one-off makeup game. The NBA Finals start tonight at 9 p.m. Eastern in Los Angeles, and the Penguins' Connor Sheary shot the game-winning goal last night two and a half minutes into overtime to beat the Sharks 2-1. Pittsburgh leads the series 2-0, and Game 3 of the Stanley Cup Finals is scheduled for Saturday at 8 p.m. in San Jose. For more information about today's stories, visit WKUF.FM. I'm David Jackson.